Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about how to turn high pressure, high stakes, like high pressure because you got too much in the expense cost not enough in the income column, high pressure called a tough market with hyper competition, margin compression, everyone and their dog chasing after the same realtors, inflation, rising rates, all that craziness, right? High pressure. We're going to teach you how to take that high pressure and turn it into high profits so you can get equipped to win, not just for a fair weather market, not just winning in a fair weather market, but winning in any market. So you can win when it's rates going high, rates going low. So you can win when there's a lot of inventory or a little inventory. You can win in any season. No more up and down roller coaster ride from hell. We're talking getting you to continue to crush your business, continue to build your pipeline, regardless of market conditions, building a recession-proof business. So you're least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most. That's what I'm talking about. So if you dig that idea, you've shown up to the right place and buckle up, seats in the upright position, it's go time, baby. So the first area I want to talk about, I want to drop some truth bombs. Are you guys ready for some truth bombs? I hope you're ready for some truth bombs because I'm about to drop them. The first truth bomb I want to drop is this. No pressure, no diamonds. No pressure, no diamonds. You see, a diamond is just a lump of mud. It's just a lump of coal under pressure for a long period of time. We want the diamonds. We love the diamonds. We love the gleaming, beaming, valuable prize called the diamonds. We all are super in a rush to get to the diamonds, the gleaming, beaming diamonds. But we're not in a rush to go under pressure to become the diamond, right? That's called pain. That's called uncomfortable. So one of the things that I want to Im- invite you to embrace is the truth that if you don't have the pressure of the preparation, then you're never going to have the exaltation called the gleaming, beaming diamond that the pressure creates without that pressure of the pain and the strain You'll never get the gain. Without the preparation, there will not be the ascension. There will not be the success that comes from preparation meeting an opportunity because success is indeed the fruit of preparation meeting the opportunity. It's like we all want the muscle, but none of us want to go to the gym and work out, right? We all want the muscle, but very few people want the lactic acid buildup, the pain and the strain that gets the gain because that is uncomfortable, right? So the goal here is to get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's how champions roll. The goal is to cultivate a champion's heart that says, okay, this pressure is the result of a storm. And in this case, the storm is gailing upon everybody. So it's not just me. Everyone's facing the storm. My competition is facing the storm. To embrace a mindset that you do your best work in the face of storms, that you do your best work in the face of market, quote unquote, market shifts, that you do your best work when everyone else is getting their ass kicked and everyone else is in freak out mode and fear mode. That's when you rise up and you win. When everyone else is feeling the strain and the pain and they're giving up and they're buckling like cheap lawn furniture and they're shrinking back to their comfort zone and they're blaming the market, they're blaming the rates, they're blaming inflation, they're blaming all these things and they're getting chewed up and spat out and dropping like flies. That's when the champions are taking market share. That's when the champions do their best work. And all of a sudden now the crowd is thinning and they're using that pressure to get better, stronger, wiser, sharper. They're using that pressure to build more muscle. They're using that pressure to take more market share. They're using that pressure to build a lean and mean business, to cut out any frills, to cut out any fat, to have a more efficient operation so that when the market shift is over, once the storm is over, they're going to be even more profitable, even more skill, even more market share, even more of that slingshot effect that propels them into 
higher heights than they would have had otherwise. So that pressure, it's not there to pulverize you. It's there to polish you. It's not there to make you bitter. It's there to make you better. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. But only if you recognize it as a pressure preparation building opportunity. The question is, are you seeing it as preparation or are you seeing it as agitation? Because if you just see it as agitation, you will not have the mindset to leverage it as preparation. If you see it as the have to versus a get to, you will not be able to squeeze the juice out of the fruit of this opportunity because you're going to be in the wrong mindset where you're dragging your heels and you're going to be in that, you know, bah humbug mentality that has you being a victim of the circumstance and giving your power away. And if you want to power up your business and power up your profits, you can't afford to give your power away. So that's the first truth bomb I want to drop. The second truth bomb I want to drop is that pressure can make you or it can break you depending on your mindset. We've talked about that already. But your mindset determines whether or not you're going to embrace the gym, make the most of the gym, whether you're going to grind and clang and bang and do the reps and do the sets required to build the muscle and to embrace that challenge as a muscle building opportunity to say, bring it on. I love pressure. I do my best work under pressure. I build the most muscle under pressure. Bring it on. I was born for this shit, isn't it? Because I'm a winner and winners always find a way to win. Or you're going to let the pressure cause you to buckle and feel sorry for yourself and to feel powerless. Now, I get it. When you're bleeding financially, when the spouse is feeling insecure financially, when you're getting into fights over money, when you're jacking up the credit card, when you're chewing up the savings, that sucks, right? No one likes that. I don't like that. I don't know anyone in the right mind who likes that. So I'm not telling you to just call it all lollipops, unicorns, rainbows, and just kind of like pretend everything's fine when it's not. I'm saying, tell yourself the truth. It sucks. It's challenging. It's hard. It's difficult. You know, you're going through the fiery furnace. So you can be completely real about that. In fact, I encourage you to be real about the pain of it. Be real about the fact that you're under some serious pressure because it doesn't matter how optimistic we are. If we're head and knees looking for the sunset, we got a freaking problem. So this isn't about optimism. This is about accurate thinking, exercising, accurate thinking and calling a spade a spade. If you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, you don't tell yourself you got a freaking tank. You say, I got a butter knife. I'm going to get bludgeoned because pretending you got a tank when you have a butter knife is not going to help you win the battle. What's going to help you win the battle is say, oh, shit, I got a butter knife. This is not going to work. I'm unequipped and ill-equipped. I better find a way to roll up the freaking tanks or I'm going to get pulverized. I'm going to get annihilated. Right. So accurate thinking is what we're going for here, not delusional optimism. But nonetheless, we want to make sure that we have the right mindset to embrace it. And the mindset of a champion is I get comfortable being uncomfortable, that I'm willing to do the things most people aren't willing to do today so I can get the results most people aren't going to get tomorrow, that I do my best work in the storm, that I do my best work under pressure. So marinate your mind on that, friend. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Allow that to soak into your soul, that you do your best work under pressure. The third truth bomb I want to invite you guys to embrace is that pressure is an opportunity for courage and commitment to rise. So when you're under pressure, you're going to have the proclivity to let fear start to creep in. Doubt, fear, imposter syndrome, inadequacy. You're going to start to feel the proclivity of the oh shit, right? When the bills start stacking up, when the pipeline start, starts to dwindle, when the expenses, expenses are more than the income, it's easy to slip into that fear mode, right? It's so easy to start losing sleep and stressing out. But at the end of the day, if we just focus on the problem without focusing on the solution, it's just going to steal our power. We're going to give our power away. and Rarely will you be powerful when you start giving your power away by allowing 
your focus to just dwell on the negativity. So it's important to call a spade a spade, but then also to say, okay, what am I going to do to fix this problem? What am I going to do to use this to my advantage? How am I going to use this not as a stumbling block, but as a stepping stone? How am I going to use this so I can embrace this as something that's happening for me versus happening to me? How can I use this to make me stronger, wiser, sharper, better to take market share and to come out of this market shift better than I was before? So that takes courage, right? That takes responsibility. Blaming does not take courage. Blaming just takes the desire to hide because truth be told, that's a hiding place. Blaming and blame shifting is the hiding place where we point the finger. The thing about pointing a finger, anytime we point a finger, we've got three fingers pointing back at us, right? So we want to take extreme ownership that if it is to be, it's up to me by God's grace and my hustle, we're going to find a way. Because like I said, winners always find a way to win. So embrace that identity that you always find a way to win, that you're a winner and winners always find a way to win. Embrace the identity that everything always works out for you, that you always find a way for things to work in your favor and that everything always works out for you. And as you have that mantra that I love knowing everything always works out for me, I love knowing that I'm a winner and all, and w- winners always find a way to win. I love knowing that everything's coming together in divine timing and divine order. Notice how now that allows you to have courage rise, not delusional optimism, but courage because it has your identity as an unstoppable mofo, as someone who's got too much grit to quit, as a winner who always find a way, finds a way to win. You're anchoring to that identity so that You see your problems in light of your unstoppable self because you and God is a majority. You can do all things through your maker, your master. In my case, because I'm a Christian, I say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that allows you to really come to the essence of who you are. And challenges reveal the essence of who you are. They reveal the essence of your soul strength. They reveal the essence of your grit. They reveal the essence of your determination. They reveal the essence of your resilience. So whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, this market shift in this market storm is simply a mirror to reveal how strong you truly are, how powerful you really are, how resilient you truly are, how unstoppable you truly are, if you choose to embrace that opportunity for courage to rise. So let's unpack this a little more, shall we? I want to give you some steps to this. The first step in turning high pressure into high profits so you can be equipped to win in any market is to raise your standards, to raise your standards. As Tony Robbins often says, we always get our standards. We don't always get our goals, but we always get our standards. You see, our standards are our routines, our rituals, our habits. So we don't always achieve our goals, but we always achieve our standards because that's what is achieved by virtue of what we will not tolerate or that what we will not allow to compromise, what we will not allow to bend because it's who we are. It's part of our identity and it's something we will not negotiate on period. End of story. We won't always get our goals, but we'll always get our standards. And so, for example, if you are someone who exercises five days a week and it's something you have as your routine you exercise five days a week, then it's going to be natural for you, even when you face trials, tribulations, and challenges to work out five days a week because it's who you are. So when you have turbulence, when you have challenges, when you have adversity, you're going to find a way to exercise five days a week regardless. On the flip side, someone who, let's say, is 50 pounds overweight, they're flabby and flubby around the middle and they're feeling lethargic, and they're sick and tired of feeling lethargic. They're sick and tired of looking themselves in the mirror with this flabby patch in their middle. 
they might say to themselves, I want to be more fit. I want to get in shape. I'm sick and tired of being fat. That's a defining moment, right? But is that a defining moment that will allow them to have the fierce determination and the rocket fuel in their rocket to drive them to go to the gym five days a week? That's yet to be determined. It depends if they've gotten to the point of what I call the fed up threshold, where they've just got to the point where it's like enough is enough, no more. I've had it. I'm done with this. I'm not willing to go one more freaking day living the fat life. So there's a certain amount of soul suffering, a certain amount of perturbance. I call it positive perturbance, right? Where it gets so painful, it gets so excruciating. It's like, there's no freaking way I'm living like this ever again. That's when you're ready to change your life. But there's a difference between going after goals and saying, hey, I want to lose 30 pounds in the next 30 days versus I'm going to commit to working out at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week. See, if you don't translate it to a routine, a ritual, a habit, then it's just a lofty idea. It's just a wish. It's just a mere wish or dream. But when you translate it to a standard, when you translate it to a daily routine, now you can have something that you can stick your grooves, your teeth into, or rather wheels into the grooves to achieve because you don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. And so it's important for us to look at our standards. What are your standards when it comes to working out in the morning, making the most of your morning? What are your standards when it comes to your nutrition and the kind of nutrition you have? Whether you're eating fresh vegetables and fruits, or whether it's a bunch of sweets and candy and refined carbs. What are your standards when it comes to the quality of people that you hang out with? What are your standards when it comes to how you plan your work and work your plan and do proactive prospecting? What are your standards when it comes to cultivating relationships with top producing realtors? Do you have time set aside to do that daily? Do you actually follow through on it or do you slip into the proclivity of doing the easy thing like pushing paper around or checking email or scrolling on social media? What are your standards when it comes to doing the things that are hard and committing to what you said you're going to commit to? Because commitment is doing what you said you were going to do long after the mood you set it in has left you, right? And if you're anything like me, that's where we get into friction and frustration is when we have our fire, you know, our Ferrari level ambitions, Ferrari level goals, but we have firefly standards. So you could have a goal of doing 2 million a month in volume. And right now you're doing 200,000 and you could have that as your goal. But if you don't have a standard of booking an appointment with the top producing realtor once a day, five days a week, the chance of you hitting that goal is pretty low or it's going to be very slow. It's going to be a a very slow grind up the mountain to get to your income goals. Because if your standards, if the quality level of your standards doesn't match the quality level of your goals, then you've got million dollar ambitions with trailer park habits. That's not going to jive, right? And I can't tell you how much frustration and sleepless nights and stress I've caused myself because I had a dissonance between my standards and my dreams. Don't let that be you. The second step you want to take once you've got your standards to be in sync with your dreams, your goals, is to focus on the vital few. You see, when it comes to marketing your business, there's a million one ways to skin the cat, right? There's doing open houses. There's you know, showing up unattended or unannounced to your uh, real estate offices. There's cold calling. There's buying leads on Zillow. There's doing five posts a day on social media. There's, you know, doing all these different things. The question is, what's the vital few? What are the top one, two, or three most potently profitable activities that will push the needle on profit and performance in your business at the highest level? 
I would suggest to you that the shortest path to the cash is and always will be getting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. So if you don't have a system and a plan to cultivate relationships with top producers and to position yourself as a welcome guest instead of annoying pest, chances are you're doing it the hard way and you're stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. And like I always like to say, there's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. So I encourage you to identify what are the top two or three most profitable activities you could ever do in your business that will push the needle on profit and performance in your business at the highest level. Identify what those top three are and start to build it into your standards that you will do those things for at least an hour every day. I call that the hour of power. Because if you don't spend at least an hour a day on your most profitable activities, what else are you filling your day with? And why are you allowing those things to control you to the point where you're not doing the things that will put the most amount of zeros and commas in your bank account? Are you running your business or is your business running you? Because anytime you say yes to the trivial many, you're potentially saying no to the vital few if they become mutually exclusive and you end up having your days filled with the trivial many, you're not going to have time for the vital few, which is why in my coaching program at mortgagemarketingcoach.com, we get our clients to focus on the vital few right out the gate. So they fuel their rocket with the magic morning routine. They have their meditation time or their God time. They have their exercise time. We call it learn and burn while their hands are busy. Their minds is, minds are free so they can listen to inspiration, motivation, education while they're exercising, doing some perspiration, hit two birds with one stone, raise their metabolism, increase their health as they increase their wealth. We also do visualization affirmations, cold shower, because the more you shrink, the more you soar. And so, and that shrinkage is real, by the way. Operation shrinkage, I'll tell you what, that second belly button is a real thing. (laughs) Let me tell you. But the energy it gives you is next level. The vitality it gives you, next level. Talk about pep in your step and sparkle in your eye. It's like you're ready to break through a freaking brick wall. It's a whole other level of energy. So the magic morning routine is there to fuel your rocket. And then the very next thing you do before you do anything else is an hour of power for proactive prospecting. We call it the 10 one 10 outbounds, three live connections, one appointment. 10 outbounds, three live connections, one appointment. But if you don't have the right overture, you're not going to get any appointments or you're going to get appointments. They're not going to show up or you'll get appointments, but then they're just going to interview you instead of you interviewing them. They're going to have the power in the conversation and they're going to treat you basically like their loan bitch, or they're just not going to give you the time of day, or they're going to give you lofty lofty promises that don't deliver. Next thing you know, you're doing meetings, but they're not converting to solid partnerships and referrals. All of that is a waste of time. You know that. I know that. I don't want that for you. You don't want that for you. So that's one of the things that you need to make sure you have a plan for, because if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. The third step in the process is pursue mastery. Pursue mastery in the single most profitable skill in your business, bar none. What might that be? I'm here to tell you what it is. Getting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. There is no more profitable activity than that. Sure, the second one is to develop systems and campaigns to mine the gold from your database to maximize repeat and referral business. By all means, that's a very profitable skill and certainly having an adept ability to mine your gold from your database and maximize that repeat and referral business is an essential skill and will certainly put more zeros and commas in your bank account. But There's nothing that even gets close to getting a small stable of seven to 12 rock star top producing realtors sending you one, two, three deals a month like clockwork. One of those partners can easily be worth 30 to $70,000 a year to you. So think about it. How many of those partners do you need? Not that many, maybe seven, maybe 10, maybe 12. Doesn't take many of those to change your life, right? So Most people are just dabblers in this. They just dabble in it. They don't really know the right strategy. They don't need, they don't know the words that work. They just kind of fly by the seat of their pants and think that if they can just throw yogurt at the fan, eventually something's going to stick. And that's true. If you throw enough yogurt at the fan, eventually something will stick. 
But if you don't have a formula, a blueprint for it, if you don't have a method by which to thread the needle and crack the code on getting these top producing realtors to eat out of your hand, to flip the script so they need you more than you need them, if you don't have a method by which to be able to show up in power with posture, so instead of chasing, you get them to chase you, and if you don't have a method by which to own the power and the positions such that you get to choose the rules of engagement and they play by your rules, it's your sandbox, it's your rules. If you don't have a system by which to be able to get them eating out of your hand because you flip the scripts such that they need you more than you need them to make you their exclusive lender to send you all their business all the time, then what happens by default is you end up spinning your wheels, banging your head against the wall, doing it the hard way, and you leave a ton of money on the table and you end up just spinning your wheels on the tarmac. And obviously that's a very frustrating situation, not to mention costly and stress evoking and evoking. So what we want to do is we want to pursue mastery. What is mastery? Well, if you think of master, what comes to mind? For me, what comes to mind is a black belt in martial arts. That's a master, right? And there's different levels. There's first degree, second degree, third degree, and so on. So even there's levels to mastery inside of mastery. But what does it take to become a master in martial arts? Well, the difference between the master and the white belt is the white belt might throw, you know, 50 different types of kicks two or three times, whereas the master might throw just three or four kicks and three or four punches, but they'll do it tens of thousands of times. So it's about repetition, repetition, repetition. Repetition is the mother of all learning, father of all skill, the birthplace of all mastery. So yes, it's mundane at times. Yes, it can be mighty mundane. But getting your ass kicked and living a mediocre life is pretty mundane as well. Choose your mundane. I choose the one that makes me rich. I choose the one that gives me impact. I choose the one that gives me influence. I choose the one that allows me to create a magnificent life, to live my best life. And I submit to you that that's absolutely the only logical choice for anyone who, in this business who truly wants to stand on top of their dream and make it real and make freedom money. You've got to pursue mastery. And the single most potent and profitable skill in this business, which is not finding a home for the loan, it's not packaging your deals. It's not learning all the loan programs and all the regulations. All that stuff is a necessity. It's attracting partners, profitable referral partners. There's no skill, no other skill that even gets close to the profit inducing power of being able to get top producing realtors to eat out of your hand. And you know that to be true. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this, you're like, Dorn, I'm putting... I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm digging what you're laying down, brother. And I need me some more of what you got. I need a proven plan. I'm meandering in the wilderness, unarmed and naked, without a GPS, without a roadmap. And you realize that does not bode well, especially in a market shift like we're facing now, where you need all the marketing arsenal you can possibly muster to win the battle. You don't want to be messing around with the pea shooter, let alone the butter knife. And so if that's you and you realize that, yeah, you have been seeing this challenging market as a have to instead of a get to, you've been in the passenger seat, holding your breath, hoping for a fair weather versus being in the driver's seat, making the most of this market so you can take market share. And if you're just feeling confused, overwhelmed, encumbered, you don't really have a plan, you don't know how to break through all the confusion and clutter and you're doing it the hard way, cold calling realtors, they're not giving you the time of day, you're frustrated, spinning your wheels on the tarmac. If that's you and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of doing it the hard way, spinning your wheels, bang your head against the wall, and you're ready to step up and learn how to win in any market, not just a fair weather market, so you can turn this pressure of this high pressure, pressure situation you're in and then turn it into high profits, not just now, but in the future. So you can break free from the up and down roller coaster ride from hell that you've been on. And you can build a steady flow of business that continues to go up and to the right. 
So you can, again, have that confidence, that mojo, that certainty that you're winning and can win and will win in any market. So you can build your house on a solid, rock solid foundation instead of on the quicksand and to build a rock solid recession proof business that's least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most. If that's you and you're on 100% commission, you would you kill with no safety net, you earn 70 basis points or higher in your comp plan. You want to add at least $100,000 plus to your annual income, and you want to learn how to work smart instead of just working hard, I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. On that call, you will have a conversation with me or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business, have an honest, frank, real, raw conversation about where you're at, where you want to be, what's working, what's not working. And if we can help you bridge the gap and take you from where you are to where you want to be, we'll show you what that's, what that looks like instead of our proven program and give you the secret sauce necessary to start winning in any market. And on if the, for whatever reason we discern and decide we're not the right fit, and for whatever reason, you're not the kind of person that I can help or we can help, we will let you know and we'll direct you to something else that perhaps would be a better fit for you. So this is not a sales call. This is a clarity call to get clarity as to where are you, where do you want to be, and what it's really going to take to bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And if we can help you with that, we'll show you what that looks like inside of our program. All right. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, and it certainly should, I invite you to book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, my name is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. I trust you got some insights and values, some distinctions. We often need reminding more than we need educating. So I hope that was helpful in some way for you today. And Obviously, the goal here is to translate this into action because the biggest gap in life is the gap between that which we know and that which we do. So without implementation, there is no transformation. And all you end up with is information constipation. So let us not have that be you. Let's get you off the runway into the jet stream and into your dream, making freedom money. And that means we got to do about it, not just talk about it, because we get paid on done, not just begun. So let's take massive action. Let's get massive results, y'all. This is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.